The Nigerian Governors Forum says the country runs the risk of a self-induced recession if the central bank and the federal government fail to comply with the Supreme Court ruling. The state executives say, considering the impact on a, size, a sizable number in the informal sector across the country, they fear the number of new bank notes printed by the CBN implies it underestimates the economy's actual cash needs. They also say that the inability to use the new notes has had far-reaching economic effects, leading to Niger uh, Naira black market, severe flood in, uh, food inflation, variable commodities prices. Uh, the governors, while expressing sympathy and support with Nigerians who are experiencing great difficulties as a result of the policy, said that they are determined to employ all legitimate means to ease the situation. And still on the Naira crisis, the Kano state government has ordered the closure of a supermarket for rejecting old notes from customers. Chairperson of the state's Consumer Protection Council, Bafa Agudi, says that legal action will be taken against the supermarket. Mr. Agudi reminded other marketers in Kano states that the old Naira notes remain legal tender, warning that any shop court rejecting them will be dealt with. Meanwhile, management of the supermarket in a letter to Governor Abdullah Higanduji apologized for its action and pleaded for the reopening of its business premises. The state had on Thursday sued the federal government over the Nara redesign policy. The presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Ashiwa Jubola Tinubu, has asked the Central Bank of Nigeria to allow the old and new Nara notes coexist for the next 12 months as part of measures to end the hardship faced by many Nigerians. In a statement signed by the APC flag bearer, he advised the Apex Bank to implement the recommendation by the Council of State to print more notes or allow the old and new notes to circulate. Part of the statement reads, and I quote, to bring immediate relief uh, to our people, we urge the central bank to consider the following. The central bank of Nigeria should announce that the old and new Naira notes will coexist as legal tender for the next 12 months to follow examples of countries that have successfully implemented similar monetary policy and that we advise the immediate uh, suspension of associated charges on online transactions and bank transfers and payments via POS until the current crisis is fully resolved. Bringing fintech companies with capabilities into currency swap program for the next 90 days to help decongest banking halls and ATM points, end of quote. And elsewhere, police authorities have confirmed the death of five officers, including a divisional police officer following a gun battle with some suspected terrorists in Niger State. The incident happened in Gurara local government area when officers of the Nigeria police force and local vigilante groups engaged the suspected terrorists who attacked some villages and communities. Niger State uh, uh, Police Public Relations Officer uh, Wasiu Abiodun said that scores of terrorists were neutralized as the police repelled the attack, but five officers lost their lives in the incident. The State Commissioner of Police, Gundele Ayodeji, led a reinforcement team to recover the bodies of the slain and reassured residents that the command will not relent in the fight against insecurity in the state. Traditional rulers in the Niger Delta region have expressed support for the review and sanitization of the presidential amnesty program by interim administrator Major General Baru Indiomu, retired. The monarchs at a meeting in Wari with the interim administrator commended the move and warned those petitioning and mudslinging him to desist. Ikena Mechi has the story. 13 years after its establishment, the presidential amnesty program has not fully achieved its objectives, especially in the area of rehabilitation and reintegration. The program has been characterized by ghost beneficiaries, huge debt boarding, mismanagement, incessant protests, unemployment, among others. These are what the new interim administrator in the past four months of being on the saddle is trying to address. At this meeting with monarchs in Wari, retired Major General Barry Ndiomo gives account of his stewardship. We de detected 
a situation where an individual was operating 33 accounts with a single BVN. There were a total of about 577 of such individuals. I have cleared the debts of the term contracts, which was approximately about 4.5 billion. The scholarship, which was close to 7 billion, as of today, I have barely 1.6 billion left to be cleared. He also spoke about the reform put in place so far and seeks the cooperation of traditional rulers in the face of stiff opposition from those illegally benefiting from the program. The presidential amnesty program is establishing a major cooperative entity. We are also working towards establishing an education trust fund. For the Royal Fathers, the move is a welcomed development and they offer their full support for the reforms. And I would like to advise our youth, groups and organizations to desist from petitioning ourselves for no good reason. He has started with the right foot and if he continues, all the mess that had been in the amnesty will be a thing of the past. This new drive to reposition the presidential amnesty program is aimed at bringing impactful development and change the narrative for more productivity. It can amage TVC News worry. The presidential candidate of the Action Alliance, Solomon David Okanibwa, says he will solve the nation's debt burdens by recovering funds from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission if elected next president. Mr. Okanibwa says a 50% proceeds from the excess crude oil will also be plowed in to tackle the nation's debt burdens and promise to improve on the welfare and equipment of the military to boost their morale in the fight against insurgency. We have enough sun in the north. We have wind in the south. So we, we, we can balance up. We have, like, I was watching a documentary in a country, there are turbines on highways, whereby the wind from the cars, moving vehicles, turn the turbine to generate electricity. We can implement that here. Then we have things like uh, floating wind energy, seashore wind energy, like that. So we should not depend so much on hydro. We can complement with solar and wind energy. Then for security, you know, in the situation, for the situation of things in the country and even the world at large, things are not moving fine.